Today we're going to show you how to change the suspension pads on your washer. And it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a large flat blade screwdriver and a smaller flat blade screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and a quarter inch nut driver. We'll also need a 7 16 socket with an extension and a ratchet, a pair of slip joint pliers, a soft faced hammer, a large mallet, a tub spanner wrench, and maybe a putty knife. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we will need to pull the washer out into a, an area where we can work around it. So we're going to first of all need to disconnect the power, the inlet hoses, and the drain hose. Now once we have the washer in a suitable area to work on, we're going to next remove two Phillips screws from behind the console. allow us to just lift up slightly on the control panel and push it forward and disengage the hooks that attach it to the main top. And then we can rotate the whole console back out of the way. Next we're going to release the clips that hold the cabinet to the back. So with a flat blade screwdriver we'll go into the rectangular opening at the front and just pivot that spring clip out of the way. Next we're going to disconnect the lid switch harness. Just release the locking tab and pull that connector away from the main top. Now at this point we can take the whole cabinet and lift it away from the back of the washer. Tilt just slightly forward. And then disengage it from the base panel at the front. And then we can set that aside. Now with the cabinet removed, we now have access to the tub assembly. We should put some type of a support behind the back panel because we will be moving the machine around a bit and we want to make sure that we support that properly. Next we're going to remove the agitator. So if your model has a uh, softener dispenser on it, we'll need to take that off first. Just give it a little bump and pull that up out of the agitator. Then with a 7 16 socket with an extension, we'll loosen that retaining bolt. Just hold the agitator with one hand to break the bolt free. And once you've loosened the bolt completely, then reach in and pull straight up on the agitator. And then pop that off and we'll set that aside. Next we're going to remove the tub retaining nut. So we'll need our spanner wrench. We'll set that down over the nut. And give it a sharp pass with the hammer. Then remove the nut and discard it. Now next we can remove the tub cover and it's just held in place with tabs all the way around. Let's just press down on it and pull out on each tab. And then we'll set that aside. Now just rock the inner basket back and forth enough to break it free. And then we can lift that right out of the outer tub. Then we'll set that aside. Now with the tub removed, we're next going to remove the air dome tube to the pressure switch. So with a small flat blade, just reach in there and start that so it'll pull off easily. And then thread it through the retaining straps and then just lay it inside the tub. Now next we're going to disconnect the spring at the back of the tub. It's a counterweight spring to counter the weight of the motor. So just unhook that. Next we're going to disconnect the tub to pump hose right at the base of the tub. So with the pliers just squeeze that clamp and pull it down. 
and carefully turn that hose until it breaks free of the tub. Now there may be some water in that hose, so use caution. Now next we're going to remove the clamps that hold the spring to the base. And the clamps are attached to the side of the tub. So we'll loosen the quarter inch hex head screw. Now there is tension on that spring, so hold the bracket as you're loosening the screw. And then rotate the bracket away from the tub. And do that on all three brackets. Now to access the one at the back, you may need to disconnect the retaining strap that holds the back panel to the base so that the panel will tilt back far enough. Otherwise use a ratchet with a quarter inch socket on it so that you can get that screw out. Now with the suspension spring brackets removed, we next have to take the drive block out. So with a large flat blade screwdriver, we just go down in the slotted opening on the side of that just spread it gently, then slide it off of the basket drive shaft. Now if the side of the spin tube is built up with any amount of detergent debris and crud, we'll need to scrape that down a bit because we're going to pull that outer tub right up off of the basket drive shaft. We're keeping our feet on the base and being careful not to bend the base. We're going to pull upwards on that tub and rock it back and forth. and then pull it free of the basket drive and set that aside. Now to access the pads, we are going to need to lift up on the base assembly here and then pivot that suspension piece that's underneath it. So just lift up the weight of the motor and rotate that about 60 degrees and that'll give us access to the suspension pads that we can remove the old ones and install the new ones. So simply take a flat blade screwdriver and just put it in under the edge and pry them off. Take note that the tapered edge faces down. Do that with all three sets. Now to install the new suspension pads, again we'll make sure that we have the tapered edge facing down and then we'll line up those two pins with the respective holes in the base plate and then with a soft face hammer we're going to tap those sharply until they lock into place. Do that for each of those. And you may have to move that suspension plate around enough to get good access. Now make sure they are secure. And then we'll lift that tub support up again and rotate the suspension plate back into position and now we can start the reassembly. Now to reassemble the washer we'll start by putting that protective plate into position and there are some tabs that will engage the front portion of that tub support and that will lock it into place. Again, that is fairly sharp metal, so wear your protective gloves. Now next, we want to prepare this uh, spin tube so that it will slide easily into the outer tub. So with a piece of scotch pad, we'll just remove any of the soap and crud build up on it.
Make sure the surface is nice and smooth so that we don't damage the outer tub seal when we reinstall the tub. Okay, now we can put the outer tub back into position. Remember to locate the bell of the air dome tube in the right rear corner. So we're just going to slide that down over top of the spin tube. Now we can next reinstall the spring mounting straps. There's a little locating tab that will go into the hole on the left and then the hole on the right is where we will put the quarter inch hex head screw. All right, when installing those spring mounting clamps, make sure that there is enough grease on the portion where the spring hooks to it. And then make sure the tub is positioned properly that the locating tab will fit into the proper hole. And then insert the quarter inch screw. Now we'll reinstall the um, extra spring on the back that goes between the rear bracket and the base frame. A slotted hole in the back cross member of that base frame that we're going to hook the bottom of that spring onto. And that will provide the counterbalance to the motor. Next we'll reinstall the tub to pump hose. Make sure it's fully inserted onto the tub. And then with our pliers, compress that clamp, put it up into position. Next, we'll reinstall the aerodome tube. Remember to feed it up through the retainers on the back panel. And then make sure it's fully inserted onto the pressure switch. Check to make sure there are no kinks. Next, we can put the drive block back on the spin tube. Simply just slide that down over, push it firmly into position, keeping two tabs on that spin tube. Make sure they line up with the two openings on the drive block. And that those tabs protrude into the opening. Next we'll install the inner basket. Slide it down over the spin tube and rock it into position. Next we'll install the tub nut and we'll put the tapered edge down. Start threads by hand. And again, just rock that tub gently until it centers itself. And then with our spanner wrench, insert that onto the tub nut. Make sure it's secure. And then tap it tight with the hammer. Make sure it's good and secure. Next, we'll put the tub cover back on. I'll line up the tub cover with the appropriate tabs and make sure that all of the tabs on the cover are outside of the tub before you snap any of them into position and rotate it until they line up properly and then press down until they snap in place. Now with the tub cover properly installed, we can next put the agitator in place. Please slide that down over the 
spline shaft. And we'll take the 7 16 bolt down through the center. And we'll have to hold the base of the agitator to tighten the bolt. Reinstall the fabric softener dispenser. Just pop it into place. And now we're ready to reinstall the cabinet. Now when we go to reinstall the cabinet, we need to make sure that we engage the bottom lip of the cabinet under this suspension bar at the front. And as well line up the two locating tabs, one on each side, front and rear, with the appropriate slots in the base of the cabinet. Make sure that we have the cabinet tilted just slightly forward until we engage that front suspension bar and then lower it down into position on both sides. Now you may need to tilt it up just slightly to get the water inlet assembly in underneath the cabinet. and then make sure that the back panel fits snugly into the opening. And once we have the cabinet lined up straight with the back panel, we can install the retaining clamps. We'll take the short end and hook it on the back panel. And we're going to press that firmly into the main top until it latches. We'll do the same on the opposite side. Next, we'll reinstall the harness to the lid switch and make sure the locking tab engages. And then we can rotate the console back into position and make sure that the hooks line up with the slots on the main top. And pull it back into position. And then reinstall the Phillips screws. And now we're ready to reinstall the drain hose, the fill hoses, and the power, and our repair is complete.